bringing Christ to the nations, the Lutheran hour. Children of the emperor, your father long Children of the emperor, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I is the 225th reigning monarch of Ethiopia, a descendant of the line which is said to have had its origins in the union of King Solomon of Israel and the Queen of Sheba, celebrated in Ethiopian folklore and preserved in the Imperial coat of arms. The seal of the house of David, Solomon's father, is there, but not by itself. The cross of Christ, combined with David's emblem, points back to the time when Christianity came to Ethiopia in the 4th century A.D., and to the force which Ethiopia's Coptic Christian tradition has exerted to bind her people together and to shape her culture. Music like that of the Krar, which you hear in the background, a four-stringed instrument plucked with the fingers, remains in use to this day. And the countryside is dotted with churches centuries old, many of them carved out of solid rock. It is to Ethiopia itself and to this Christian tradition that we want to introduce you today as the Lutheran Layman's League presents a special program on the celebration of Christmas in Ethiopia, featuring an interview with His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia. Paris Ababa, Ethiopia's capital city, means new flower in Amharic, Ethiopia's official language. The city is aptly named. Less than 80 years old, it grew up in Ethiopia's central highlands to a present-day population of nearly 500,000. I talked with Emperor Haile Selassie in his private office in Jubilee Palace, built in 1955 in the southeast part of Addis Ababa, to commemorate the 25th anniversary of His Imperial Majesty's reign. Although Emperor Haile Selassie speaks excellent English, which is Ethiopia's second language, he answered my questions in Amharic, since state protocol requires him to conduct all official business in the official language. Our first interpreter is Dr. Manasi Haile, Ethiopia's Minister of Information and Tourism. In the background, you can hear children playing in the courtyard of the palace. Your Imperial Majesty, it is a great honor to be permitted to speak with you today and also to have you as a guest on this special Christmas program, which will be broadcast to people all over the world. Your Imperial Majesty, what is it that makes you want to follow Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ was in the Catholic Medellin. Jesus Christ was born from Virgin Mary. From that time on, he lived an exemplary life. A life which men everywhere must emulate. This life and the feats that he has taught us assures us of salvation, assures us also of harmony and good life upon earth. Because of the exemplary character of the life of Jesus Christ, it is necessary that all men do their maximum in their human efforts to see to it that they approximate as much as they can the good example that has been set by him. It's quite true that there is no perfection in humanity. From time to time, we make mistakes. We do commit sins. But even as we do that, deep in our hearts as Christians, we know we have a chance of forgiveness from the Almighty. He told us that all men are equal, regardless of sex, their national origin and tribe. And he also taught us all who seek him shall find him. To live in this healthy life, a Christian life, is what makes me follow Jesus Christ. Imperial Majesty, what advice would you give a person who is considering the claims of Christ, perhaps for the first time? Mm -hmm. 
I would tell a person that's considering the claim of Christ uh, for the first time that it is necessary to have faith in the Almighty, that it's necessary to have love, and that it's necessary to conduct oneself in a manner that we have been taught to do in the Bible. I would advise him to read and to study the Bible. I would also advise him to seek a secular knowledge. For the one, the more one knows, the more he realizes the need for a prime mover, the need for a creator, a creator who is good, and the, the need for salvation and also for peaceful life upon earth. I'll also tell him to learn and to think for itself the ways he would serve the Lord. In this thought and in this understanding of it, you will inevitably find the way of serving his fellow men. For his faith would then be manifested by his conduct. If Christians behave in this way, if we dedicate ourselves to this fundamental task, then we will have a peaceful world and will be assured of not transgressing against uh, the will and the commandments of God. Your Imperial Majesty, are there any incidents in your life which stand in your memory as times when faith in Christ sustained you? There are many instances in my life where the belief in the Almighty and the Christian faith has sustained me times of trouble and difficulties. No matter what may befall a human being, he can always succeed in overcoming it in time if he has the, he has the strength of faith and praise to God. For inevitably, he comes to the assistance of those that believe in him and those that through their work live an exemplary life. This goes not only for Christians in my view, but for all men. I think God commiserates with those uh, that find themselves in misfortune. In particular, when my country, Ethiopia, was invaded by alien forces several years ago, I was sustained in that period by my faith in God and in the abiding belief that justice, however it may take time, will ultimately prevail. If I did not have faith in the Almighty and in His righteousness and that justice inevitably prevails, then I would have lost hope and that thus the interests of my country would have been ignored. Because I attempted to maintain my faith in him and because all Ethiopians maintained their faith in the ultimate goodness of the world and then the design, grand design that the Almighty has for all men in the world, we were able to victoriously re-enter our country and rid ourselves of its forces. If I did not have in my heart the love of God, I don't think I would have acted in a manner that I did. The love of God brings a sense of religiousness in human being. It gives him comfort for the future and assurance that the right causes will ultimately prevail. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I ascended the throne of Ethiopia in November 1930. Now in this year, 1968, Haile Selassie has been in the forefront in mediating the crisis in Biafra. Some of the intervening years have been stormy ones. But there are few statesmen who can retrace a career of more resolute leadership in both internal and world affairs. Few can claim greater unbroken continuity with the past that nevertheless moves methodically into the 20th century. At the same time, few have seen more anguish and defeat 
young Haile Selassie, of whom biographer Leonard Mosley has written in projected epitaph, he shaped rather than waited upon events. Just seven months after he became emperor in 1930, Haile Selassie gave the people of Ethiopia their first written constitution. His plea before the League of Nations in 1936, as his country was ravaged by Mussolini's armies, and his anguished exile during the following years, are etched in the memory of the world. When he regained his throne in 1941, his refusal to allow retaliation against the defeated invader was viewed with disbelief. On this day, he said, I owe thanks unutterable by the mouth of man to the loving God who has enabled me to be present among you. Today is the beginning of a new era in the history of Ethiopia. Since this is so, do not reward evil for evil. Do not commit any act of cruelty like those which the enemy committed against us up to this present time. When the United Nations Charter was drawn up after World War II, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie was one of its original drafters. In 1963, he established the Organization of African Unity to encourage cooperation among African states and to coordinate their efforts to build a better life for all the peoples of Africa. Constitutional reforms in 1956 guaranteed all the rights of the people of Ethiopia, though the emperor retains much personal power in governing his agricultural nation of 22 million people, all the time seeking to lead his nation toward a fully modern way of life. At 76 years of age, his Imperial Majesty continues to work a 20-hour day with three hours for sleep and one devoted to prayer. Emperor Haile Selassie and I talked about many things on that day during the rainy season. You can even hear its thunder once or twice. Our English interpreter for the remainder of the interview is Otto Menker Esaias. Otto, by the way, is the Ethiopian equivalent for Mr. Otto Menker is editor of medium wave programs at Radio Voice of the Gospel operated at Addis Ababa by the Lutheran World Federation. Imperial Majesty, how does it seem to you the Apostle Paul meant the statement, faith works by love? What St. Paul said here is not a mistaken statement. You all know what St. Paul was and what kind of work he was engaged in before his conversion. Later on, after his conversion, he had faith and love, and if he had not had that, he would not have taught people this in his epistles. Neither love nor faith are separable from each other. An elaboration of this is Paul's exposition in one of his epistles, which speaks of love and peace. Without love, all of our human efforts in the sight of God can be useless. He loved us, and on our behalf, he was given as a ransom, and it was because of love, and his love for us, that he accomplished the act of love. Your Imperial Majesty, ja! as a member of the body of Christ, what do you expect of the church? The church is not merely a building. The church is the faithful fulfillment of the Christian life and its requirements. Thus, as the name applies to the building, so is our heart the church in which God dwells. After our blameless Creator was sent to this world by His Father, then the hearts of all believers became the temple of God. The love of Christ cannot be fathomed by a series of questions and answers, and man's soul cannot experience deeper enrichment as a result. We believe that man can at all times be bound by his love and grace. Your Imperial Majesty, ja! as a member of the body of Christ, what do you feel you can contribute to the life of the church? I All men are endowed with natural responsibility. This responsibility is in turn distributed and delegated to all according to his gift, and it is expected of each one 
to fulfill his responsibility. This responsibility in turn is to God. And thus, for example, one would start his working by asking God to bless the beginning and thank God for the good ending too. We believe that all people, in all of their responsibilities delegated to them, will begin and finish their work in God's name. I gave you a brief answer. If we go on into details, we would have to spend a long time discussing. And uh, I am deeply grateful for it. To turn to another subject, Your Imperial Majesty, are there any passages of the Bible that have become especially meaningful to you? I have the highest respect for the Bible as a whole. We also recognize the rightful name the Bible bears. We find that in all the periods of the Old Testament, in the time of patriarchs, kings, and prophets, great miracles were done. On the other hand, the New Testament, the Lord himself, gave the command to go to all the world and to preach, is also of high value. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels in which the sayings of our Lord are recorded, are pillars for all men on the earth. Therefore, the Bible should not be cut into portions. Your Imperial Majesty, as a mature Christian, have you a special word for young people these days? <laughs> On this occasion, I address also all those within our empire. Our Christianity is not restricted to a given church, and I stress about all that we do not wish to make a distinction. My advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. You are aware of the contents of the Ten Commandments and can elaborate on it. If the nation for which I am the emperor follows and accepts this, since it's also what I accept and follow, I would believe our country is not only historically Christian, but also actively Christian. The birthday of our Lord is observed by people throughout the world in various ways, I know. And I should like to ask you, how you observe the feast of the nativity of our Lord within your own family and household. The birth of our Lord is a joyous family event. However, I do not only rejoice with my immediate family, since the whole Ethiopian nation is my family. I say this in the context of Christmas being observed by all churches in Ethiopia. I rejoice on this occasion also because of Jesus Christ being the Jesus born. For he was born in a and both born by animals. This one encourages us to celebrate it with joy. When I have visited the five large continents, I have not been anywhere where there was not a church. All over the world, I have come to know that the birth of Jesus Christ is celebrated. Thank you, Your Majesty. Excellent is thy name. And a figure of world importance, and probably one of the best known men in the whole world today, I should like to ask you this question. What meaning can the birth of Christ have for the nations of the world today? As I said before, the birth of Christ is celebrated all over the world. When I say in the whole world, it does not mean that all people would observe it in the same manner. In all the places that I have visited, including the Muslim and the Buddhists, we have seen the observance. But for Christians, it is an act conducted with love. Your Imperial Majesty, you have done us great honor. 
and also all the people who will listen to this broadcast by giving us the opportunity to speak with you this day. And all those who are listening should know that this conversation was held in the Imperial Palace in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, with His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Ethiopia, Ali Selassie I. And we thank you and wish you God's blessing in all the days to come. Excellent is thy name. He is captivated as I was by the young voices of the student choir of the Haile Selassie I Foundation School for the Blind in this Christmas carol sung in Amharic. A child is born in Bethlehem. Children of the emperor, get hands across to me. 